uh, to this story making headlines. Nine people shot and killed in two separate tavern incidents over the weekend. One was in Gauteng, the other in Mpumalanga, and it also left 10 people injured. Now, the National Liquor Traders Association says it's really concerned that taverns are being deliberately targeted. Now, Lucky and Timane is the convener of the association, and he joins me now. Lucky, thank you so much for joining us. I wonder if you could just go through both attacks um, separately and tell us exactly what happened. Thank you so much, uh, Sally, for the opportunity, and good evening to NCA uh, viewers at home. This is a sad day for us. Let me start first by uh, sending our heartfelt condolences to the families that have lost their loved ones in these senseless killings that we've witnessed over the weekend on two separate uh, occasions in Gauteng and in Pumalanga. So we, we reached out to the spokesperson of Pumalanga uh, Committee Safety, uh, who relayed the story of what transpired in Kanyamaz and Elikazi, which is about 15 kilometers outside of Nelspreet, where gunmen uh, got into a tavern uh, wearing balaclavas and just started to spraying everyone with bullets. There were 16 people that were affected and uh, two sadly died and 10 uh, are recovering in, in hospital. But in, on the second incident uh, that took place in Deviton uh, on the early hours of Sunday, uh, gunmen uh, went into a tavern and started to shoot uh, randomly and seven people lost their lives uh, in that incident as well. We are concerned because, you know, it is very clear that uh, the intent of these killings is not some sort of robbery because none of uh, these two incidents uh, uh, were there any instance of uh, belongings being taken away from the victims. So this is clearly a target and we are not sure why we as liquor trainers or especially as taverns are being targeted this way, which is creating panic across the whole spectrum of uh, tavern owners across the country because we rely on our consumers to put food on the table. Now, when fear is being put in the hearts of those that are supposed to support us to sell alcohol in a responsible mm. manner, it worries us because it means that, that our businesses are actually now in the hands of criminals who can dictate who to shoot and at what time. I mean, it does. It sounds so similar in a way to what happened in Nomzamo Tavern in Soweto, where 16 people lost their lives when gunmen opened fire. As you say, this is not a bar fight that goes badly wrong. This is not a robbery. This is gunmen walking into an establishment and opening fire. Um, similar modus operandi to what happened in Nomzamo. Um, what what possible motive could there be? Are we talking about perhaps gangs who are demanding protection money um, from these taverns saying, right, if you don't pay us a certain amount of money, we're going to unleash all sorts of problems for you. What are the tavern owners telling you? This is clearly not, you know, an issue of uh, uh, gangs going to taverns wanting uh, protection money, because if you look in South Africa currently, we have about 42,000 taverns that are operating. So surely they can't be that the rest of the taverns are agreeing to bring uh, this protection money and then two taverns in this instance over the weekend refused to pay that money and hence they were targeted. Uh, I think maybe this points to the setup of a tavern. You know, a tavern real estate exists within communities, within society. So when there's a, a wave of crime in a particular community, uh, certainly it's going to spill over in the tavern environment because that's where people go to relax and to have fun. You know, there are very few spaces in the township space mm. where people can go and, 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 and you know, have sure. a good time. But what is the motive? So I mean, it we, can't we be an overspill. Sorry, sorry to jump in because your line is just going a bit funny there. But um, what is the motive then? Because it's not just normal crime. Because, you know, someone, gunman opening fire is for a very specific reason. What do you think is the motive? I think it's important that we understand what the motive is. Uh, and, but I think in this case, we'll have to uh, leave this matter to the police. We have full confidence that we'll get to the bottom of this. Uh, we've reached out to uh, relevant law enforcement officials, to, you know, to get to the bottom of this because it's creating panic, you know, mm -hmm. across the country because we don't know who is next. We need to understand why our people are being targeted and why our consumers are being slain this way, you know, in a place of enjoyment where they should go and have fun but they come back, you know, in a, in, in a coffin. It cannot be that this continues to happen in our environment. Not that crime should happen anywhere else, but, you know, sure. for us, you know, we rely on these taverns being operational that we can support our families. 
So tell me why you have such confidence in the police. And I'll I, I tell you why I asked this question. Because in the Nomzamo shooting of July last year, six suspects were arrested. In June this year, they were released, apparently a lack of evidence. Um, part of the problem is witnesses are too scared to testify against uh, these suspects. Um, there don't seem to be any consequences, therefore. I mean, the <laughs> Nomzamo shooting, that story didn't just make headlines here. It made headlines across the world. No consequences over a year on. Why are you so confident police can get to the bottom of this? I think like we have highlighted that you know, th those that were responsible in Umzama were arrested. The issue is the, the witnesses and that's why we're calling on community to come forward with information that will lead in, in the arrest of these perpetrators. These people stay in our communities who committed this crime. They are known and they should not be you know, hidden away from you know, the, the, the lady justice. They should be brought out so that they can face this crime. That's why we're saying that we have confidence in the police because they've shown over time that they're able to arrest these perpetrators. The issue is the support from communities who are not willing to come forward and testify against these criminals who do not deserve to spend any day you know, outside, outside of, the, of the prison bus. So hence we are making that call to community to say, please come forward. We have to stop this, but we can only stop it if we work together. Police also need our support to be able to fight crime in the country. And we as Lekwaterias are saying that we are taking that stand to support them. And we're making that call to communities to come forward as well and support police in apprehending these criminals. You've also written in, in your media briefing that you want liquor traders to comply with their licenses, specifically around trading hours, making the point that a lot of these attacks happen in the very early hours of the morning. Now, are you suggesting that in these cases, indeed in these last two cases, were these taverns operating outside their licensed hours? Uh, the information that we have, uh, Sally, is that uh, these incidents happen outside uh, operating hours of these taverns. But this is not an excuse that people should be staying in that regard. But also saying that in order to mitigate the risk you know, of something similar from happening, the contractors ought to respect the license conditions you know, that govern on how they sell the alcohol. We cannot be that now we, we, we have to you know, uh, uh, caution our traders against complying with a very basic tenant of their condition of selling alcohol. But these two incidents specifically, you know, the, the shooting in uh, Deviton happened around uh, 3 a.m. The tavern was supposed to have been closed at 2 a.m. In Pumalanga, it happened just after 1 a.m. The tavern was supposed to have been closed at, uh, at, at uh, midnight. So there is a pattern here that, you know, when there is non-compliance, this type of things uh, tend to happen. And in order for liquor traders to be able to ensure that we are able to curtail this type of violence, we need to be able to abide by the liquor regulations as permitted by the various liquor laws that we abide to as part of our conditions. Yeah, I mean, the fact is if those establishments had closed when they were meant to, uh, those killings may would not have happened because everyone would have gone home. Um, talk to me about the security steps that you're encouraging tavern owners to take, what seems to be the most effective way of managing this sort of issue? Look, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a basic understanding amongst the traders that you know people that have uh, firearms or knives are not allowed at the tavern, but we cannot rely on people's conscience to be able to prevent this type of things from happening. So tavern need to be able to put someone who will man the entrance, you know, check people that are coming in and also reserve a right to allow or permit anyone coming to the establishment. We have to do this because, you know, the failure to do this means that, you know, the tavern sector, as you know it, will be doomed because we'll be, you know, operating at the hands of the criminals, which is not something that's going to support our businesses. But the quarters need to be able to invest, you know, some resources in ensuring that there is security. It is incumbent upon us to ensure that we provide safe environment where our patrons can enjoy alcohol in a most responsible and safe environment. So we have to do it as the quarters. There's no other way. All right. Thank you so much uh, for speaking to us. Really troubling situation. Thank you, Lucky and Timani. He's convener of the National Liquor Traders Association, talking about two incidents, one in Mpumalanga, the other here in Gauteng and Davidton, where nine people in total were gunned down. And in both cases, robbery was clearly not the motivation because the gunman simply opened fire on patrons. Nothing was stolen at all.